you have just been told to exit the vault. The door is wide open. You can feel the cold air rushing in. Uh, people are a bit haphazard about the way they're leaving, but they're trying to be orderly. Sort of. Some of them are. What are you guys doing? I'm sticking with my fam. I'm staying close and trying not to... I don't know. Not leave. <laughs> trying to not not leave? I'm casually... Not not leave. I'm casually doing my little strut out the, to the place where we're going. Outside the vault or whatever. Outside, yeah. I'm assuming you guys at this point have put on your coats, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have them. You have these I heavy have coats. Coat. Yeah. Uh, like fur, no, li- fur lined coats. Uh, don't don't you know? It, it's uh, you guys are babies. It's not that cold. <laughs> I'm gonna go out in my shorts and t-shirt. Yeah, you get frostbite and die instantly. That's not how frostbite works. You get frost. Well, it is a, when it's this cold. <laughs> you know, it's nuclear winter. You step outside and you die from shock. You step outside and you crumble like chalk. <laughs> you just get Thanos snapped away. You just disappear into little snow particles. You become a part of the winter. You become the nuclear winter. Uh, it's very cold outside. You guys have put on your heavy coats. Everyone has. Uh, they're like fur-lined coats in the hoods, but they have like the vault logo on the back. And on the front, probably. I don't know. But they're like blue and yellow, as they would be in the games. Uh, and, I mean, it's kind of like an onslaught. It's kind of disorienting so many people are rushing out at once you know usually you would not have this many people in one place anywhere else in the vault except for right now at this moment this is the most crowded you've ever experienced in your life i i've come prepared i have a gun i'm gonna hold i'm gonna hold my mom's hand yeah she she holds your hand she holds your hand and she looks at you and doesn't speak because she is mute. <laughs> yeah, I would assume so. <laughs> I'm taking one of her speaking hands, so... At the end of the series, she's going to say one word. <laughs> and, she, and it's going to be... Come. Lies. <laughs> it's going to be deceit. Oh my god. Don't make her say anything. No, I'm not going to. Uh, After a moment... I mean, so let me describe the outside for a bit. The outside of the vault is a very flat, uh, cold area, almost sort of like a peninsula out into like a little bit of a frozen over bay. So it's sort of like barrier islands, you know? You know, like have, they have in like mm-hmm. Louisiana or whatever, they have a bunch of barrier islands that are very long and straight, and then there's water on both sides. And then there's the coastline. Yeah. There's a lot of that going on. If you look to your to your right... Well, if I look to my right, at... I see a couch and a wall. Oh, I got my TV right here. Yeah, Jimmy? My right yeah. yep. is my door. My door. Oh, I have a door oh. over there, too, yeah. We got doors. Yo, you got doors? We all got doors. Door buddies. Lefty, do you got a door? I got a door, too. You guys are getting, you guys are getting doors? <gasps> door gang. Door gang. Uh, No, but it's like almost like a peninsula, a very tiny peninsula. Uh, Back behind you, there's like a single, very decrepit-looking road. Are we going to go down that road? Uh, so everybody is sort of crowding around. The overseer steps out and says, All right, well, the town should be down that road to the southwest. Uh, we're going to go head into that town. That's basically the only way we can go right now. Uh, everybody has their jobs they're doing. And the fate of our camp is on the hands of a cam addict and a lil kid. <laughs> Excuse you. Two little kids and two chem addicts. Unless, unless I wouldn't child. call myself an addict. I'm just, you know. Um, um, oh, wait, hold on. Who's all part of our party? <laughs> so, besides it's you two, yeah, yeah, Howard and Mandy. That's right. Okay. For now. I forgot they were with us. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, you know, things might change, but for now, that's what the party's looking like. And a bunch of people start heading down that road uh, in, like, clusters. Uh, over- the overseer makes sure that we send them, like, in small groups so that the road doesn't get, like, too clustered or anything. So it takes a little while before your group is sent off. And it's just the four of you walking down this decrepit, uh, almost destroyed water. I mean, there are parts where it just goes under 
the ice. Most of it's under snow or ice, but there are parts where it goes, like, under where the water would be if it wasn't frozen. Mm. So you have to be careful. Go ahead and actually... I'm going to have you guys roll a dex save. There's a particularly icy patch. Right. Uh, what die do we use? Is it a normal d20? Yeah, we have agility. Um, I don't, we don't have dex. No, dex save is an actual ability, isn't what? it? Oh. It's an actual skill. Oh, like... No. Yeah, but so... Yeah. Agility. Yes, it's a skill. Uh, sorry, agility save. Yeah. Mine is 19. So it's on a... It should be on a d100. Okay. Let me get my d100. Roll four. Mandy and Howard. 65! All right, with the 65, you are able to uh, carefully step over the ice. Not, not too difficult. I got a seven. Yep, you are able to as well, without too much issue. Mandy got a hundred and four, so she is fine. Howard, she does a backflip over the ice. <laughs> she does a backflip over the ice. She okay. Howard gets more than enough. He gets a hundred and eight, a hundred and eighteen. No one ice. falls over the ice. Howard literally does like a sprint and a run, and he does that thing where he slides across the ice, like m almost moonwalking but forward, and it's really cool. And you're all really impressed. It's like moonwalking but forward, so walking. <laughs> no, but like you know how moonwalking, you do it like. No, sliding? I know, I know, yeah. Yeah, How he slides you, really cool. Howard? A little thing I like to call momentum. It just works. Can, I'm I'm gonna try doing the same thing over a, a different patch of ice. Okay, uh, an agility save again. Okay. Holy shit! I got I got a one hundred. Yeah, with a hundred, you are able to fairly easily pull off the same move although it's less impressive and cool uh sadly but it is you're able to do it and oh, you slide the longer and I'm with you Todd. can you kind of feel a little uneasy but you you get across pretty well <sighs> wow the, the longer wow. i'm with Ho uh, howard i the more i want to stab him <laughs> how rude hmm. i'll keep that in mind no i'm i'm, I'm saying that like it's, it's like to it's like you guys not not in, in game i don't want to upset him because I feel no, like he can kill me. I know, me. I know, I know. I'm oh. saying that as the overseer. Oh, okay, me. yep, yep, yep. Me, overseer, <laughs> I was going to say, because, like, I'm I feel that. like he could kill I'm me. Saying. He could probably harm you. I don't know about kill. He could um, totally kill you. I'm sorry, Papa Scuff. You, you a weenie. <laughs> you a weenie compared to the actual Chad that is Howard Talk. Well, I did. As you guys are goofing off with the ice, you hear in front of you, the sound of growling. Oh! Are there polar bears in Alaska? Wait, no, I should know this. <gasps> it's a wall. Check's book. You have to check your book. Uh, yeah, there are two mangled-looking wolves with, like, gnarled teeth. They're small, relatively, but they are. They have these gnarled fangs and disgusting, disheveled fur. Uh, go ahead and enroll initiative, everyone. Okay, so what's the initiative die again? Um, pretty sure believe... D twenty with your agility modifier. I could be wrong. Well, where's the uh? I th that sounds right to me. I got a nat twenty, and I it's either it's plus three, so twenty three. Do we add the agility modifier? Yes, you add your agility mod. In that case, I got fourteen. And I got okay. twenty three. First one to move is Ant. Fuck you. What are you going to do? Okay. Ant has a fucking gun. <laughs> yeah, you're right! <laughs> Part of me was about to be like, hmm, I think Ant would do, like, quickly try to remember facts on the wolves that can help us in this situation, but then he just pointed out that Ant has gun. Ant contains gun. So now that's a hard choice. Would Ant look up information that could help us in this situation? Or would Ant gun? So th think of the... I think, so, so you're, Ant is first up in the order. You're the first one out of anyone within this combat to react to, or do anything. So I think, this is just my thing. My, I think probably your first instinct is to take a shot, but that's your choice. Ant has 
never shot a gun before, but her first instinct... It's not gonna end my turn, hopefully, but she's gonna turn and say, Oh, hey, wolves! To alert everybody else, even though they probably already know. Yeah. Oh, hey, wolves! And then I'm gonna try to shoot my gun. Just, oh, hey, wolves! I, so... Oh, hey, wolves! Oh, shoot. <laughs> Everyone's just like, oh! <laughs> oh, hey, wolves! Wait! <laughs> Oh hey wolves! Bang! Right, go ahead. <laughs> oh hey wolves! So how combat works for you guys who don't know, you're able to make as many attacks or whatever as you have AP. That's right. So you use AP. Combat is cool in this system. We haven't really got to explore it a lot, but you have you have a certain amount of AP that taking a shot will use, and you can do as many of those as you can fit in one turn with the Sweet. AP. Sweet, I'm gonna you have. take three shots at a wolf. How much AP All right, and you roll for okay. each of those. Okay. So, so the what... 10 millimeter uses three AP, and you have nine. Yeah. Okay. That works. So what do I roll so to you... see if I hit? Let's see. It's in the handbook somewhere. I gotta look it up. Shit. Uh, is it small guns? Do I use a D100? It would be small. It would be small guns. Let me look up the rules for combat because I think there's a specific way you're supposed to roll. This is gonna be very interesting to just hear. Uh. Oh, hey, wolves! And then bang, bang, bang! <laughs> uh, so you roll d d20, add the modifier of the weapon type, and then... So, so, um, so hold on. So, your modifier for the weapon type, uh, if, so, say, for example, you have 45 and big guns, and you're using a big gun, you would add plus 4 to hit for that. Okay, so I have, uh, 19 and small guns, what would that be? Plus 1. Okay. So you would make a uh, d20 roll with plus 1. Okay. And you get to do that three times. Yeah, I accident that one rolled off the table. Alright, so one of them is a nat one plus one. So that one uh clearly misses. That misses. Yeah, unfortunate. Alright, a five plus one, that one also clearly misses. That also misses. And a fifteen plus one. Sixteen hits. So go ahead and roll damage. Alright, so that well one D six, I believe. And then it says bonus mm -hmm. one. Would that be adding that bonus to my range? Uh, Not range, but my damage. I I think so. The damage bonus is half of the hit bonus. So no, you you just get plus zero. Okay, uh, I got two. So one of them just got slightly hit. Yeah, so you, like, graze its left back paw. <laughs> yeah, Ant is it... clearly uh, not... Has never shot a gun before. She missed almost it three yelps. times. It yelps and then it growls at you. And it is going to be... Unless you're going to do anything else. Which you still have movement, I think, but... By the way, guys... Uh, wolves are carnivores. And in the Alaskan nuclear wilderness, they probably haven't had something to eat, so... Yay! This that's a thing. Yeah. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, Papa Scuff, it's your turn. All right, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to. Oh, hold on. What does Jet do? It does uh, one max AP for ten minutes. All right, I'm going to use my one of my Jet. All right. Uh, which doesn't use any of my thing as a matter of fact jet gives me uh plus one max ap um hold on not nah, addiction i gotta do that now real quick let's see when he says addictive can we must make an addiction saving throw yeah. all right and then addiction saving throw requires stuff with things that's right all right i must make it a durant saving throw um, which is a d20, right? No. I'll look up the chem. So you're using jet, right? Yeah. It's an addiction of nine. So or it's a d... Nine. Make an endurance save. It's the DC of nine, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Make an endurance okay. save, you gotta beat nine. Uh, only my base score for this save, so endurance. Oh, zero. Okay, gotta beat a nine. And I don't. I'm now addicted to that jet. Jet and psycho. Yep. So what? What's the what's that addiction to jet do? 
once you once it runs once it run its effect runs out oh what does it say where's the withdrawal thing withdrawal is somewhere on here um it so it's once it runs out it's not right away uh you have you ha i think it's like a minute or something that it for 10 minutes wait no jet for 10 minutes yeah with with jet it's minus one charisma minus one agility i'll just kind of put that down all right so make sure that. yeah you will have to write that in your character sheet it, like under conditions yeah Go ahead and so that costs two a two AP right to use. Uh no no so it to to use uh like uh the drugs or whatever it doesn't use. At least I don't think it does. It, I, I didn't find anything saying it I think, did. I think it did last time. Um. I think we decided that using items costs two AP. Hold on, because. What is it? Because what Jet does... Oh, it's, one, it's plus one max AP. Huh. Hold on. So you'll gain... So it'll only cost one AP then. Overall. Net. But let me see. It, it, it probably says something in combat. Using eight items. Food items. Take one minute to consume. Medicine and chems can be used at any time. Oh yeah, you're right. Cost two AP for... Okay. So I'm, yeah. I'm assuming... Yeah, a net one AP, so... I'm at nine, but I do have a max of ten for next combat. If so, okay, okay. Yeah. Now I'm going to go ham on one of the wolves. <laughs> I'm going I'm go crazy. to uh, go stupid. Uh, waltz up to one of the wolves and smack him a bunch with my kniff. My combat. All right. Kniff. Go ahead and roll that attack. So it's d20s, right? Yes. I'm assuming. Which one are you attacking? Um. Let's see. There's two of them, right? Yeah, I'm gonna there's the one Psy attacked, and there's the one Psy I'll, didn't attack. I'll go and attack the one that Psy didn't attack. Good idea. Okay. And to make sure, so it's, uh, for the to hit is 10 of each, you know, each 10 that I have in that said skill. So, for example, if yes. I have a 35, it would be plus 3 to hit. And then damage is, yep. what is it, it's for every 15? For every 20. For every 20. So you would have one. Okay, okay. So, let's see. I could make a total of four attacks. No. So the first attack? Sounds good. Uh, 13. Nope. Second attack? Uh, 18. Yes. Roll damage. Okay. Three. All right. It yelps. Go again. Uh... 19, 20, 21, 22. So. Yep. Yep. And then four damage. It's looking close to the edge. You've you can see there's like a patch of fur that you just like sliced off and dug into its skin. It's real gross. It's real gross looking. Mm. Oh wait a minute. Uh, add two more damage because I'm because I am currently under withdrawal. I have no chem's rage, which adds one damage under withdrawal. So. In that case, it drops dead. Nice. <laughs> uh, and you have one more attack, right? Um, I think. You, you've you've used three, so you'd have one more. Okay. Yep. 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 And then the other wolf. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn over, look at it, and be like, "You're next, buddy." You just like throw your knife off to the uh, side. I got. I got. I got a thirteen. <laughs> nope. You miss. All right. Uh, that'll be your whole turn. Mandy is next. She is going to cower behind you, Ant. Uh, and let's see, how much AP does her laser pistol take? Uh, she's going to use her laser pistol on this mofo. Uh, so let's see, what is her energy weapons? Uh, it's plus one. So no, she misses. She tries to take a shot with her laser pistol and misses. It's okay, Mandy. You'll get him next time. She's hiding behind you. I gotta comfort my friend in this trying time. In this, in these trying times. Wolf number two, the one that is still alive, is angry at you, Mr. S Mr. Papa. <clears throat> so it's going to run up at you, and it's going to slash with its claws. Um, It got a 22. 
It does seem to hit one point of damage. One point of damage. And it's going to be Howard's turn. This is fun because I get to do combat with myself. So he's going to go ahead and do the same thing that you did, Ant. He's going to take a shot at the wolf. Uh, he's going to take three shots at the wolf with his 10 millimeter. 10 millimeters, three AP, yeah? Uh, yeah. That's the same one that me yeah. and your aunt has, so yep. Yeah. He? What is his small guns? Oh, yeah. He gets a 17, which hits for the first one. One point of damage. So he gets a 15, which misses, and a an 11, which misses. So he does one point of damage. And the, the wolf recoils a little bit and gets angry. It is Ant's turn again. Right, sweet. Bang, bang, motherfucker. Guns. Alright, uh, 12. No. 8. No. 20. Yeah, not 20? No, not nat. Just, Damn. just 20. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. 2 again. Nice, yeah. Uh, you take another shot, and it hits a little bit, like, kind of towards the top of the leg. Uh, and it goes like, Aww. And then and it growls now again. Feels bad. And it stop. Then it growls again and goes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Papa Scuff, it's your turn. I'm going to scream at it, and then I'm going to go ham with my knife. I would uh, like you to act that out. I, I, I'm not going to. I'm not going to <laughs> scream at it in real life, buddy. Ah. ah! That's a ah. that's a knife. Uh, first one's thirteen. And then you. So no. nope. Uh, that's nope. <laughs> that's another nope. <laughs> well, I'm royally fucked. Oh wait, I got one more attack because I have a total of ten. That's right. Okay. Nope. <laughs> How's that jet doing? Um, oh, yeah. pretty good. <laughs> all right, nice. You you miss. All of them. All of them. Yep. All of them. You all miss them. all of them. Yep. Well, I mean... Mandy is going to take another attempt with the laser pistol. Which is what, like a 13 doesn't hit? That is hit. a... Hmm? 13 doesn't hit, yeah? 13 doesn't, no. Okay, yep, and all of them... Not, not with a gun, no. She misses the first one. Misses the second one. She doesn't get a third one. I don't know why I rolled again. <laughs> she only has 8 AP. She doesn't get a third one. It is the wolf's turn. The wolf is going to try again at you, Papa Scuff. Sorry, you're getting dunked on with, by this guy. It gets a 12 to hit. Um, nope. I have an AC of 18. No? All right. Howard's turn. Howard's going to try again. Pop a couple another, sh another couple shots off. Nope. Uh, yope, I think. That's a 21. That is... Yeah, that's a 21. So, three damage. And the third shot is in that one. So it is three damage. All right. Ant, your turn. Gonna shoot, shoot. All right, a five? No. A three? No. And a ten? No. Ant is horrible at shooting, let it be known. Ant has a gun, and she doesn't know how to use it. I mean, the first thing she did with her gun was literally look down the barrel when she first got it. Do you really think she knows shit about having a gun? It wasn't loaded. It wasn't, but still, that's not something you're supposed to do. Papa Scuff, your turn. Alright, uh, gotta go ham with my knife. Okay, uh, 18. Mm-hmm. That hits. All right. Dealing three damage. It is close. You, like, you like cut into its neck and it's starting to bleed. Uh, it's just fighting. Twelve doesn't do it. That doesn't do it. Come on. Okay, one more in. Dealing, because uh, 16, 17, 18, 19. Six damage. How do you want to do this? Um... I'm gonna stab it in the eye. <laughs> like pull it out and eat it. 
No, I'm just gonna st You know what? I'm going to knock it over, slice it open, and eat its heart! <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. You're serious? 100%. 100% serious. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, um... Oh, God. <laughs> Let's see here. Would that be considered it, canned like... dog food? No, 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 never mind, never mind. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, s mm. well, I'm not seeing any any dog heart, but you know, wolf heart. But let's. Uh, I can make something up. Jesus, Jimmy, Jesus, you're actually doing this. Yeah. Jesus. Okay, Jesus. Dude, um, I yeah. So I will say, uh, uncooked wolf heart, uncooked rad wolf heart, will be. Jesus Christ. <laughs> On a fucking stick. Holy shit. Uh, let's. Fucking hell. See this. What are you. I will say it will be. And feel free to give me like. 4, rads. four HP. 4 HP. And. 10 rads. Hell yeah! Um. How. Mandy is cowering in the corner at your display. <laughs> she's like trying to slowly slide away on the ice, but she like she's on her back, like you know how like you'll be sitting on your back and your arms are behind you, and those are what are holding you up, almost yeah. like a crab walk. She's yeah, she's doing that and it's like sidling backwards away from you. <laughs> she's like, I don't want any part of this. How how do Aunt? How do you react? Ant is in also complete and utter shock because holy shit. Holy shit, man. He, he can't he, like she's just sitting there not even saying anything though, but just thinking like you can't just fucking do that. Well, I don't see you stopping me. <laughs> <laughs> National I'm Geographic did not prepare her for this. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude, you ate the wolf's heart. You would have done it to me! That's fair. Yeah, you know what? That's fair. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out here. Dog-eat-dog -dog world. <laughs> I hope if we you... don't eat the dogs, the dogs will eat us. I hope you guys realize that for the longest time, I legit thought dog-eat-dog -dog world was just doggy dog A lot of people do. Yep. So that probably just... Ant is in just still in complete shock, just like holy shit. Uh, ten percent of a tan is one, right? Who are you asking? You, you. Ten percent of a ten percent of a of ten is one, yeah. Asking for yeah. a friend. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then I take a total of nine rads because of a I have ten percent radiation resist. All right, sounds good. You have nine rads. My goal is to get one thousand rad. rads, uh, so I could uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. have a chance of becoming like a, a ghoul. one percent chance of becoming a ghoul, right? Uh, or, or, and actually, like, no. Or is it five? So, the, uh, so it's really low. Eighty-one to ninety-five changes my race to a regular ghoul. Ninety-six to a hundred changes me into a glowing one ghoul. The rest kill you, though, don't uh, they? Sixty-one to eighty. Turns me into a feral ghoul, which I lose control of the character, and then I want to do sixty. I die. <laughs> so, if you got sixty nine, if I got sixty nine, I would uh, turn into a feral ghoul, and then nice. basically you take control of my character, but I become like a yeah, nice. like a dummy head, like a poo poo brain. You would become a poo poo brain. Poo poo brain. <laughs> my, you would become a poo poo brain. My goal is to successfully become a ghoul. <laughs> It's your out of character goal, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you guys wrap up uh, that that discussion. Everyone walks in silence down the road. <laughs> Mandy tries to slide and falls over. <laughs> I'm gonna help her out, but I'm staying you fall silent over this too. whole time. Oh. <laughs> You fall over, but like it's like it's like that awkward anime way where you like fall over right on top of her. 
I'm gonna get up and try to help her up again because I'm not gonna make this into some awkward anime thing. <laughs> you fall over again, but this time it's not on top of her. <laughs> Our Todd! <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm calling for help. <laughs> he looks back at you and he says, Did you both fall over? Yeah. He tries to help you up, and then what, he falls what, over. What is this? Like, one of those anime things? <laughs> <laughs> Why are we all falling over? Um. I like that I'm not even letting you guys roll. <laughs> yeah, why are we falling? Why we be falling? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna, like, uh. Hold on, what, what's that thing called? Uh. Dice. No, 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 no. Skills. Sandwich. Corn dog. I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna yell body I'm just gonna yell body pile and I'm gonna run over and like jump on top dog of him. Pile. Like 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 flop my body on him. Dog pile. <laughs> dog pile Wow, how uh that... how yeah yeah it's dog pile. How uh How fitting. How fitting. How appropriate. <laughs> this is awkward now. Why have we done this? Mandy hates you. <laughs> you you are is... now very evil. Aw oh, shit, very evil now. <laughs> No. B very I evil think time. I should be super clear that this was not a good idea. Like, your first hint was the fact that you stat- Like, the first hint was the fact that everybody is shocked at you for, you know, just eating a wolf heart. Raw. You also stabbed Mandy's father. Yeah, you also stabbed <laughs> Mandy's father. Dude, I've seen a fucking- I think Mandy tries to push- I think Mandy tries to push you off. I, I I saw a fucking like like news article of a dude who ate a dude's face for being on bath salts. You know that th little rock shit you could buy it or you were able to buy at a fucking like Walmart. I'm pretty and sure that if I buy, like Kem's you can still man, buy them at the Walmart. Well, yeah, they're they're bath salts. All right, I guess I'll shimmy my way off and away from them, shunned from the world forever for the actions I've done. Yeah, yeah for right. good reasons. You guys are able to get up. Uh, Papa Scuff, you are under withdrawal now. I'm uh, going to say that. Yep. In 10 minutes. Uh, as you guys progress, I think Ant, uh, Ant and Mandy. Mandy's kind of like trying to walk a little ways back from Papa Scuff and Howard Todd. Uh, j just, you know. You know. You know. You know. Ant's going to stick close to her friend. Yeah, uh, and she's kind of fiddling with the pit boy that she has just received, like all of you have. Uh, she's like messing with some of the dials, and she pulls up the map of the town, and you can kind of see how where you came from was sort of to the northeast. There was like a little peninsula, and then the road, which is basically the only land cutting through this like bay, and then the town is sort of where the peninsula ends and comes into like the main landmass. And, you know, there's kind of a few buildings. And she points at her pit boy and she says, look, look at this part. And she points at one building in particular in the town. She says, I think this is a library. Wow. That's what, yeah. The, the... Oh, I just, oh man, I just realized we could go and find like old books. Yeah. Learn lots of new information. Yeah, we should. Oh, we should go to the library. We should. We're in town. And uh, up ahead, Papa Scuff, Howard Todd is talking to you. And he says, you know, there's probably like a medical center or something in town, an old ruined medical center. You know, that was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> it is? Yeah. I feel a little under the weather, you know. Uh, By the way, do you got any jet? <laughs> Or, uh, or, uh, you know, the, the good stuff, you know, the sacco. I love that stuff. I just, you have any on you? And I think you missed my point. There may be a medical center, or a health center, or a hospital in town. Ah, uh, yes, they might have some. Well, good thinking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start looking for the medical center. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming you're, like, checking on the pit boy or something. Yeah. Because as you guys are walking. Yeah. I think Howard Todd's looking too and he says Yeah, yeah, no, I think I think this this looks like a medical center. And he points and he says Yeah, you see this thing here? The Picron Health Center, named after Laura Picron on Twitter, thank you. Uh 
Picron Health Center in town, right there. Um, you want to go there? Yeah. You guys reach the edge of the town where like buildings actually start, and you can see there. I mean, the roads are all decrepit and they're covered in snow and dirt, and the buildings are just not entirely destroyed, but many of them are crumbling or sagging, and there are like trimmings on the outside that are just like completely fallen to the ground and blown away. The build, the town is not doing great. Let's just say that. Not a single person in these streets except for the vault dwellers that you've known all your lives. So as you guys reach into town, you guys stop walking, you sort of collect together. Howard says, so what we got until noon? We do. I think that's what the overseer said. Mandy chimes up and she says, yeah, the overseer said we have until noon to get our bearings in town and then head out. Do we need to get a library card from the library first, or do we do we just take all the books? Uh, I'm not sure, but we should probably... Should we just meet here outside the library when we're all done? Yeah. Yeah, I'm down for that. That sounds good to me. It has been a few hours since you showed up at this camp and everything got settled. Uh, the people have been drinking uh, and chatting and the radio has been playing. They've since turned it off. Uh, some of the new crew, some more of the crew have started showing up. A couple more parties have shown up. And all of them seem really interested by you. Um, a lot of them are asking, like, what's it like being a robot? Um... <laughs> I, it's kind of hard to describe, I guess. I, Do you have feelings, or...? I think so? Where did you come from, anyway? I... I, I don't know. Do, do you know where you were, like, made, or when you were made? Do I? <laughs> uh... I don't know if you would. He said, one of the other guys uh, chimes up and says, you know, these guys were probably made like way before the war. A couple decades at least. I said, it's so crazy that some of these things are still surviving after the bombs dropped. Um, and Lieutenant Chin speaks up and says, what kind of things do you like? What kind of things do I li like? What do you like to do, you know? I enjoy helping people. I mean, well, that's your job, but, like, what do you do for fun? You know? For like, fun. You know, play any games or read or watch anything? Like, what do you do? Uh, I like to clean. <laughs> so you don't, like, do things for fun, then? You just do your job and that's it? I do quite enjoy organizing things. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe in the morning. I mean, I'm sure everyone's found a lot of shit out in the town, but maybe in the morning I could have you sort all the stuff out that we found and just, like, try to distribute it evenly-ish. Sounds lovely. You don't, like, listen to music or anything? I guess it's just weird to me to, like, imagine not doing anything for fun. Sorry, I, it's the only answer I can give. Wow. Tell you what, guys, uh, it's getting a bit late. I don't think the rest of the parties are going to be coming back anytime tonight. Uh, we can shove off in the morning. Everybody, you know, get some rest. Uh, and you look up in the sky. The sun is still out. The sun's still, like, way up in the sky. Okay. Uh, and you notice, like, as everybody starts heading off to their tents for sleep, uh, the sun never really goes down. I mean, it, hours pass, 
sun just doesn't really go down. Huh. I'm assuming I know that's not normal. <laughs> I'm assuming, yeah, you would know that. Uh, you would probably realize that this is because you are above the Arctic Circle. Huh. Which means that because of the rotation of the Earth, the sun doesn't go down for several months out of the year in the summer. And the opposite is true in the winter. I see. Uh, and so, I mean, it's still broad daylight. It'll be 2 a.m. and it's still broad daylight. The sun is still out. Everyone's asleep. You and Mandy are, uh, you guys are looking up at the library. Uh, immediately the first thing that you see is where the door is, it is completely blocked by just rubble from the ceiling where it's caved in. Uh, there's a big ass hole that's also blocked by rubble. <laughs> it's completely blocked off. Uh, and next to the door- Is there you... a window we can crawl through? Uh, not in the front, no. But next to the door, it's kind of all, like, the entire front of the ceiling is kind of caved in, right? So it's pretty much blocking off the front face of the building entirely. Uh, look... Next to the door, there is a small plaque that says Austin Nort Library, named after Austin Nort on Twitter. Thank you. Uh, we're getting some of those names out of the way, so. Okay, I'm going to turn to Mandy and I'm going to say, well, that's not OSHA compliant. Yeah, I don't think it is. <laughs> How are we going to get in? There's probably a window to the side or the back. Good idea. Yeah. I'm going to and... Yeah, I'm going to look around and if the window isn't already broken, uh Aunt is 100% going to probably use her security baton on a window or her gun. No, that's a waste of ammo. We're using the baton. Why do I have a baton if I'm not going to use it on the window? Fair. Uh you you want to smash a window in? <laughs> yeah. There is a window on the side. It is right next to a shelf of books. Hmm. This is like right on the inside. There's a shelf of gonna books. Gonna smack that window. All right. Um, go ahead and roll a strength save, I suppose. Okay. Oof. That is thirty nine. So you rear up to like go at it with the baton and you swing it and you realize that you are too far away from the window and you just kind of swing it and it just like falls to the ground i'm gonna try that again I'm gonna scoop okay, closer this time um, after picking up my baton are you trying to smash the window yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay i'm gonna try that again God, that is literally just... That's 49 now. You strike the window with enough force to bounce off. Ha it bounces off. Tough window. <laughs> I'm going to take out my gun and shoot the window. Okay, roll that. Roll uh, small guns. <laughs> Okay, so that's, uh, 96. <laughs> yeah, it shatters. It fucking is just gone. It's dust. You, you win. Yeah. You've, you've defeated win. You've defeated window. Gained 300 XP. Uh, I'm going to make sure that any, like, shards of glass left over, I'm going to use my baton and, like, smack them off. Smack them out of the way. Yeah. Uh, Mandy is standing there staring at you as you, like, slowly shamble up over the window. And you're, and you're like, yeah, come on. Please tell me the window is not unlocked, because if Mandy just opens up the window from the outside because it's unlocked, I'm gonna fucking... No, it's not unlocked. Okay. <laughs> uh, she's just, like, she's, like, staring at you. 
I'm gonna make a joke for Mandy. I'm gonna unlock the window and then push it up <laughs> to open it. Like, yeah. hey, come on in. You're like you're like sitting there straddling the window, and looking at her, and she's just staring at you aghast. And then once I get in, I'm just gonna open it for her and be like, get on in. There's a whole library to explore. You shattered the window with a gun. Well, how else were we supposed to get in? There's a vent right there, and she points. Like, right above the window, there's an air vent that's just, like, wide open. Well, that seems more complicated than just breaking in. Yeah. I saved us time. We have more, we have more time to get more books. I guess you're right. To get knowledge. And she, she, she's convinced, and she, like, hobbles up over the window uh, behind you. And you can see from the inside, I mean, the library is not very great. There's no light on. The only light is coming from the windows. It's very dim inside. Uh, the entire front face of the building, where the door and the front windows are, is just rubble. The ceiling is caved in at the front. Uh, and it's very wet there as well. Oh no, the books are going to get all moist. But the shelves in the back, they're coated in dust and cobwebs, but they are relatively dry considering the situation of this building. I'm gonna turn to uh, Mandy and say, like, okay, uh, what we should definitely look for is we should look for books on, like, Alaska or, like, survival books. So if we take them back to camp, then everybody can read them and get better at surviving. That's a good idea. Because I can guarantee you a lot of people at camp don't know how to make a fire. I also don't know how to make a fire. Fire would be nice in the harsh nuclear winter. Mm, you're right. But you know, I was really hoping I could find this one series. I had a novel series that I read as a kid. It was the um, the Lucy Hancock books. Do you remember those? <gasps> the I read every single book in that series. There was like a hundred of them. I read all of them except for one. The last one. The whole series is ending, and I really wanted to read it. And I lost it, and I never found it. Well, hopefully I'll be here. Libraries are supposed to have lots of books. Maybe. So the library isn't that big. I mean, it's very much like a local small library. Yeah. Uh, it's like one floor, you know, like six rows of books. Mandy's like, I don't know if I would take the whole thing, but if they had any of them, I would take them. And... I think she starts combing the library a little bit. Um, I'm going to join her with, like, trying to, you know, comb through the library, and I'm going to tell her something that's definitely important to keep in mind during this harsh, harsh Fallout-based game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's super, it's super good that you're trying to find these books, because uh, as much as I keep focusing on survival... It's really good to keep all the things that make you happy. Because if we were all just shoot, shoot, survive, survive, there'd be nothing to look forward to, you know? We gotta keep the things that make us happy around. Mandy looks at you, and she smiles, and then she looks back at the shelf, and gasps, and she says, It is! It's here! Look! It's right here! It has the whole series, I think! And she, like, runs her fingers along the spines of each of them they're coated in dust and she like runs her fingers down the spine of the first three and she pulls those three out and she says oh my god they're just like i remember them and she shows you the book and the cover is like sort of an old like one of those old like 50 covers 50s mm -hmm. covers of like a girl with like a magnifying glass and like footprints is this essentially just nancy drew but yeah it's her name is lucy hancock though and it says, Lucy Hancock and the missing pendant. I've decided. <laughs> and she says, look, this is the first one. I remember reading this when I was like six. Oh my goodness. I wonder, and she starts flipping through the pages. I wonder what other books they have. Do, they have, do you think they have the Barry Trotter series? Maybe. Uh, Barry Trotter. Barry Trotter! <laughs> Written by O.K. Howling. Oddly a better author than the real one. Ooh. Yeah. Take that. 
Yeah, no, uh, we're in agreement there. Uh, Hot take of the day, J.K. Rowling, not good author. Yeah. His first book's really boring. Yeah, like, The plot doesn't show up until, like, 95% of the way through. It's really dumb. Yeah, we we can make jokes about wizards pooping themselves all all we want, but, like, the whole house elves are slaves, but they like being slaves. Hermione's being stupid for wanting them to not be slaves thing was also pretty shitty. Oh, God. There's layers upon layers that you look back on, and it's like, this isn't very good. I thought it was supposed to be magical. But it was not magical. But instead, it's just racism. <laughs> Pure racism. Uh, what were we doing? Oh yeah, Barry uh, Trotter. Okay, Barry by Trotter, okay which, which in this universe is a uh, non-problematic. Barry Trotter is about a berry collecting scientist from Mars who goes to a wizard school called Pig Farts. Who goes to a wizard school called Pig <laughs> Pig Farts. <laughs> Because pig farts is on Ma. <laughs> I love it. Um, she looks at you, and she's kind of not really paying attention anymore. She's like looking at the books, and she says, "I'll take the first three. I'll leave the rest here. You'll come back anyway." Yeah. Uh, wait. Do they have the last one? And she lo- she moves down the aisle a little bit to look. And she says, "It does." Look, it's right here. You should take that one. She points in and she looks at the spine and it says like a little hundred on like in a little symbol on the spine. You should take that one. And if we come back here, you could return it. So the next person who wants to read the last book can read it too. She smiles and nods and she says, yeah, that's a good idea. And she takes the last one. Oh yeah, we were going to look for important information books. Yeah, survival ones. Because I'll help you with that. Yeah. And then she kind of drags you off to another shelf where like there's a little sign that's kind of falling off the bookshelf that says information and self help. Woo. And there's some books on like ADHD and OCD and stuff, and then there's some books on Alaska and like the local wildlife and camping. Yeah, it's gonna like skim through a lot of these and like like, you know, look through and make sure, like, is this information helpful? But, of course, um, in an age without the internet or any way to really source check things, there might be, like, a book or two with, like, you know, some stupid misinformation, like, like, uh, what's you a common mis- ducks don't have corkscrew penises? Um, like, misinformation, like, oh, if you're ever out in the wild, the first thing you should do is build a- uh, it was either- Locate food or build a shelter is one of the ones that's wrong, because it's the vice versa. Uh, oh, good one. Uh, if you see an animal eat it, it's safe for you to eat, and it's like, that's not true. That's not true. Note to everyone at home, if you're in the wilderness and you need to locate food, locate food you know you can eat. Because if an animal eats it, doesn't mean you can. Like pussy. Ew, man. You know, cat, like fried cat. I mean, humans could Probably. eat that, but that's very morally upsetting because for maybe maybe for you, but this is the wasteland. We just witnessed Papa Scuff eat a fucking dog's heart. That was a wolf, okay? There's a difference between a non-domesticated wild animal and a domesticated domesticated pet. <laughs> okay? Fair. So, yeah, I mean, I think the two of you look through the information books together. And you guys pick out a few of them. And she says, you know, maybe when we get back from this, we can clean this place up and open it up for people in Camp Barrow. Yeah. That, that'd be really fun. Because reading is such a good thing. I see only one problem, though. And she's going to point at, like, the giant rubble and going to be like, I don't think we can lift that. Well, maybe with enough help. Yeah, that's not... That sounds fun. They said Alaska was so cold. They said to live there you gotta be oh so bold. They never knew just what we had till it was gone. Alaska, where'd you go? Alaska, where'd you go? 
Alaska, where'd you go? Why'd you go away? Alaska, where'd you go? Alaska, where did you go? Alaska, where'd you go? Why'd you go away? Yeah. They said Alaska must be cold. They said to live there you must be oh so bold. They never knew just what we had till it was gone. Hello, everybody. This is your overseer, Max, here. Thank you so much for listening to Episode 7 of Fallout Survivors of the North. Uh, As always, I'm going to start with a quick few shout-outs. The first one being to r slash vnv. Now, I know, you've heard it a million times. But the people on r slash vnv, the subreddit for the game which we are playing, Vaults and Vertebrates, have put so much time and effort into making this game free as well. Uh, and for giving help and telling stories, and just it's just a really great, relatively small community, and I would love so much to see it grow. So please go check them out, give them some love, join their Discord even if you want to. Um, I also want to shout out Austin Nort and Laura Pickron on Twitter. I don't know their exact handles, but they are. Two people who gave us five-star reviews on iTunes, and as such, we named locations after them. Well, I named locations after them, but uh, thank you to them. Austin Nort, I believe, DMs a po- or GMs a podcast called Grim Encounters, if I'm not mistaken. Austin Nort is the GM for a podcast called Grim Encounters. Uh, you may or may not have seen us, you know, retweeting and being retweeted by uh, this guy's account. Um... Uh, so please go ahead and give him some love. Show that podcast some love in return. Um, and Laura Pickron is sort of a friend of the show. Uh, I've definitely spoken to her on the Advanced Save Brush and Shootouts Discord a lot. So, you know, thanks so much for the support. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at FalloutSOTN. If you'd like to be something named after you on the show, usually a person or a place, you can go ahead and tweet at us or tweet about us using the hashtags Fallout Survivors of the North. Sorry, using hashtag Fallout SOTN or hashtag Survivors of the North. I kind of combined them there. It would be it'd be really long and cumbersome if you used the full name, but I guess you could. Uh, I may not see it, though. Or you can review us on iTunes, which would be really helpful because it's really nice seeing someone say, Oh my god, this podcast is so cool and it's funny and I like the people on it. It's really motivating. Um, hey, uh, I hope you had a very nice Christmas for those who celebrated it, or whatever you may celebrate, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and I hope you have a nice New Year's that's coming up later this week, next week. Uh, our next episode won't be until next year, which is amazing. I mean, it, we only lost, launched in October, but this is the last episode for 2019, which is pretty crazy. Uh, our next episode will be on January 10th, if I'm not mistaken. Um... Which, by the way, uh, this episode's on December 27th, uh, and I am finishing it uh, at 9.52 a.m. Mountain Time on December 27th. So, we will say that this is a very close call. Closer than last episode. So, but hopefully that should be fixed since we have more uh, recorded now. I should be able to start editing right away. Anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to say. As always, thank you so, 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 so much for listening to this podcast. I know we haven't even, like, left Camp Barrow, and this is, like, the third episode of the arc. So, (laughs) hopefully soon we'll actually start doing the name of the arc, which is beating them to Dead Horse. But, until then, I will see you next time. This is your Overseer Max, signing out.